Welcome, everybody. Welcome, man. Welcome. Sometimes there's a delay. When it goes live, there's a delay before it shows up on my YouTube page. How you doing, guys? Welcome. Early morning session for me because I have to head out. So invite folks. Pray. Please do take a moment as you're inviting folks to pray. Ask the Lord Jesus to fill us with the Holy Spirit. Ask the Lord Jesus to cleanse us and purify us and the blood of the Lamb, His blood that He shed on the cross, the Lord Jesus Christ cleanse us. Ask the Lord Jesus <clears throat> to help us focus in Jesus' name by the power of the Holy Spirit. Ask Him that He'll empower us by the Spirit to grant us perfect self-discipline, self-control, to destroy our lusts, our sinful passions, to crucify our flesh, to fill us with the fruit of the Holy Spirit, to illuminate us with wisdom, knowledge, understanding, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Ask the Lord Jesus to anoint this mouth of mine, to wash my mouth, wash the words of my mouth, wash my tongue in the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ, that the Holy Spirit will anoint me to speak perfectly, to speak clearly, to speak passionately, to speak <clears throat> accurately, that the Lord Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, will save me from stammering, from confusion, from stuttering, from misinformation, from error. And please pray with me and ask the Lord Jesus to perfect these gifts in us, the gifts he's given me, to use it for the glory of our God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Ask the Lord Jesus to enable me to recall scriptures correctly, interpret them correctly. Ask the Lord Jesus to increase in us, to give us the power to love him more, to worship him more, to live for him more perfectly, more faithfully, to never shame the Lord Jesus, to never dishonor the Lord Jesus, to never blaspheme the Lord Jesus, to never gr grieve the Lord Jesus, but to glorify the Lord Jesus, to obey the Lord Jesus perfectly. I ask the Lord Jesus to sanctify us by the Spirit and empower us by the Spirit to offer our bodies as living sacrifices, holy sacrificial lives, living holy sacrificial lives, cleanse in the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus, in love with the Lord Jesus, loving the word of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Bible, obeying the word of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Bible, living out the word of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Bible, and proclaiming the word of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Bible, without shame, without... <clears throat> Fear, <clears throat> never perverting the scripture, never distorting the scripture, but interpreting interpreting the scripture perfectly by the power and wisdom of the Holy Spirit and proclaiming it with boldness, with passion for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are the Son of God. We love you, Son of God. You are the Son of the Father. The heart of the Father became flesh. The virgin-born Son of Mary, the eternal companion of the Holy Spirit, loosen my tongue, Lord Jesus. Save me from stammering in error. Save me from shaming you, Lord Jesus. Save me from unrighteous anger. Save us from distractions of Satan. Lord Jesus, rebuke Satan. Rebuke his filthy dogs. Silence their mouths. Break their filthy mouths. Crush their, smash their filthy tongues, their wicked, blasphemous teeth, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> and Lord Jesus, fill us with the Spirit. Fill us with the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Flood us in your living waters, the Holy Spirit. Cleanse us in your blood, Lord Jesus. Save us from our sinful lusts, sinful passions. Crucify our flesh. Destroy our flesh. Destroy the fruit of our flesh. Fill us with fruit from the Holy Spirit. And Lord Jesus, bless the internet connection and save us from distractions around me. Please, Son of God, Lord Jesus. Sit and throne upon our hearts, Lord Jesus, the hearts of our loved ones. And Lord Jesus, I ask in this session, fill my lungs, my heart, my arteries, my throat, my chest with life, the breath of life. Fill us with the breath of life, the health we need to use our health to love you and glorify and worship you, Lord Jesus, by the power and might of your Holy Spirit. And Lord Jesus, grant us holiness to delight your heart and please save us. Save me, Lord Jesus, not to succumb to the flesh, to our lust. Save us, keep us pure, to never shame or scandalize our testimony, to never fall. <clears throat> And grieve you, Lord Jesus, or blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Save us from financial and sexual temptations and, and pride and arrogance and the stain of the flesh. Please, Son of God, Lord Jesus, keep us pure and in love with you, Lord Jesus. Save me from unrighteous anger, unholy indignation. Please save us from saying rebuke the evil one and fill us with your peace, your joy, your love. Grant us self-control, Lord Jesus. Grant us contentment, Lord Jesus, self-discipline that we need. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Be with us and our loved ones. Be with my daughters. Seal them by your spirit. 
Cleanse them in your precious blood, Lord Jesus. Cleanse our loved ones, Lord Jesus. Seal them by your spirit, Lord Jesus. And grant us perfect wholeness. Make us whole and complete and heal us by your blood, Lord Jesus. By your wounds, Lord Jesus. By your Holy Spirit of life. Heal us and make us whole spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, and physically. And if you're pleased, Lord Jesus. If you tarry, Lord Jesus, grant me many more years to serve you faithfully, to love you more perfectly, to worship you more consistently, and to see my daughters grow up for your glory. May they outlive me, Lord Jesus. Be with <clears throat> your servants, Lord Jesus, and use me to bless them. Use me to encourage them. Use me to see them, <clears throat> see myself. Fall more in love with you, Lord Jesus, to plunge the depth of Scripture, bring out the spiritual meat of Scripture, and save us from error and sin and idolatry and blasphemy and immorality. We need you, Son of God. We love you. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Almighty name, watch this one. We're going to say, We can, Lord Jesus Christ, help us, Spirit. Okay, guys, do pray for the internet connection. <clears throat> I said I was going to try to do a live stream. I have. A long trip ahead of me. I'm going to be leaving the hotel room in about two hours. I got to get ready to leave. So pray for me in Jesus' name. Pray for traveling mercies. Pray for traveling safety. Pray for provision. Pray for my health. The Lord Jesus helped me to get healthier and stay healthy. Pray for holiness and purity to truly love the Lord Jesus Christ. Obey the Lord Jesus Christ. Be a doer of his word not a hypocrite. Please pray for that, that the Lord Jesus Christ will empower us to truly love him and worship him and adore him by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' almighty name. Pray that the Lord Jesus will save us from buffering and distractions because I'm in the hotel room and ask for powerful anointing for this session in Jesus' almighty name. Watch me, God, my Savior, King, Lord Jesus Christ. So let's again <clears throat> pray again by praying the Lord's Prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, both now and forever, unto ages of ages. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. If you're hearing some distractions, it's because it's during the time where the workers are going to the bedrooms, to the hotel rooms, and they're <clears throat> cleaning up the rooms. So please, again, ask the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, to bless the internet connection, no buffering, save us from distractions, constrain me perfectly, grant us perfect self-control, so I don't stammer, and I don't... <clears throat> stutter to speak truth perfectly accurately and to do so with passion and love boldness and patience for the glory of jesus christ and that i never sin in my angry i'm gonna watch my god my second king lord jesus christ <clears throat> the reason why i ask for those prayers is because i know my weaknesses because my day begins by having to go through my comment section and reading comments like this by a guy named gandal berry gandal berry See, you wonder why sometimes I insult them and give them a taste of their medicine and treat them as they deserve, according to Proverbs 26, verse 5. Tell me this man is not a satanic tool, a tool of Satan, a filthy, wicked, satanic bastard. I mean, honestly, I try to be scriptural even when I rebuke and insult people. Bastard, whore, dog. Look at this filthy scum of the devil. May the Lord Jesus save him or give him what he deserves and silence him. Gandal Berry, I'll give you his YouTube link. He says, if you mean Christian Prince, you know that little clip where I'm making fun of Christian Prince? That isn't true. CP isn't boring. He is doing a great work. Now watch this, guys. I'm sorry to said he doesn't even know how to speak English. He's just as illiterate as his parents and Muhammad. I'm sorry to said that but you look like you're suffering of cancer or hiv because you've lost weight there you go here's the channel gandal berry i'm sorry to said but i look like i got cancer hiv by the way folks it's it's amazing you know how many people say hey man you got cancer now again 
let me remind you guys. We're about to begin. Let me remind you guys. The Lord Jesus doesn't need me. The Lord Jesus can call me home right now. And I ask the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, to fill me with the Holy Spirit, to prepare me for my death. If the Lord Jesus tarries, we're all going to die. I want you to remember this. One of my favorite passages in the Holy Bible. Are you ready? One of my favorite passages in the Holy Bible. David is about to die. He's 70 years old. In 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 2. 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 2. David says to Solomon, I'm about to go the way of all the earth. I love that. Watch this. Sorry for the distractions. There's, they're cleaning the rooms. I'm about to go the way of all the earth. I love that phrase. It's in 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 2. All right. 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 2. I'm about to go the way of all the earth. Folks, <clears throat> whether we like it or not, when, when the Lord Jesus returns, which we eagerly await, he will destroy physical death. There'll be no more death, no more pain, no more suffering, no more disease, <clears throat> no more Satan. And we who believe in him, if we are his, will be glorified. We will be made physical, physically immortal and morally incorruptible to dwell in his presence forever and glorified bodies that cannot sin anymore and in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for that day. But until that day comes, whether we like it or not, if the Lord Jesus tarries, we must physically die. But physical death is not the end of us. If you believe the Holy Bible and believe Jesus is alive, he is. Your spirit, your soul leaves your body. You are still conscious and alive. And your spirit, your soul has a shape by which <clears throat> you are still recognizable. A shape that resembles what you look physically. So that you will enter the heavenly presence of our God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So if the Lord Jesus wants me to die, his will be done and give me the power to face death and overcome it by the power of the blood of the cross of the Lord Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb, and by the power of the Holy Spirit. But if the Lord Jesus is pleased, do pray for me for perfect health. Pray the Lord Jesus helps me to get healthier, to get holier, to be more in love with Jesus Christ. And if the Lord tarries, to give me this favor. To continually serve him, even unto death, with integrity and honor. Serve you for the sake of Jesus. Love Jesus. See my daughters grow up to be godly women, and they outlive me. But at the end of the day, the Lord Jesus doesn't need me. Right? He can call me home now. As far as I know, I have no disease. Thank you, Lord Jesus. No cancer, no diabetes, no heart problems. In Jesus' name. But how wicked is it? When you have Mohammedan dogs saying, I got cancer and liking me to our brother, Nabil Qureshi, who died at 34. And yet they forget to tell you their filthy Muhammad, that Mohammedan scum, Muhammad, who's a bastard from the pit of hell, burning in hell. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for damning him in hell, causing to burn with your wrath that he deserves. Glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. Muhammad died the death of a dog. He got poisoned by a Jewess, died. Even Aisha said she hadn't seen anyone suffer as much pain and agony as her filthy, scum, satanic whore husband, Muhammad, that pedophile and woman-raping whore, wife-beating whore. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for bearing him hell and shaming him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And yet they have the audacity to attack us. Ain't that sad? Anyway, so just to let you know, this is what I deal with every day. You guys may not be aware of it. This is what I deal with every day. I'll get up in the morning. I go to comment section. You'll have arrogant, filthy, wicked, hate-filled, satanic tools, even those claiming to be Christian, attacking, mocking, ridiculing, insulting, and wishing death on me. So this is part of doing ministry. Pray God will constrain me and fill me with the Holy Spirit to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. So we love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus, Son of God. We love you, Holy Spirit. May we be cleansed in the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus. And I pray the Holy Spirit take over the session, take over our lives completely, own us for the glory of Jesus Christ, and save me from stammering and bless the connection. Now, with that said, <clears throat> I'm going to address James White. Are you paying attention? Pray up. Ask the Spirit to fill us. Help me to help you. Focus. Don't be distracted. 
please don't be distracted. Focus, because Satan's going to distract us. But in Jesus' name, rebuke the evil one and plead the blood of Jesus Christ to shield us. Yeah, Allah. Watch this movie down. So you can Lord Jesus Christ. I have to May the Lord save me from Stanley. I have to address this. This will ex explain to you why James White does great damage to his cause, great damage to his ministry, and actually becomes a great help for those <clears throat> who are seeking the fullness of the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he makes statements that cause his listeners to go back and check the sources. And when they do so with an open heart, trusting the spirit, he ends up causing them to leave Calvinism or Protestantism and end up embracing one of these apostolic traditions, be it Roman Catholic or Orthodox. And I will prove it right now for this session. I'm trying to be as gracious as I can in refuting him. So pray for me. Ask the Lord Jesus to give me the power to refute others who identify as Christian and do it boldly, passionately, without fear, but also to do it graciously and lovingly so I don't anger the Holy Spirit and I don't cause people to stumble unnecessarily. It's hard. It's very hard. Right? I have said it in the past. I'm going to say it again. Yes, Credo, he does have a cult following. And I know I'm going to offend people when I say this, but I'm going to be very, very honest. <clears throat> he has gotten to a point where he is the standard of what the Bible says and what it doesn't say. And he has drawn a following that look to him as if he's the infallible Protestant Pope. Lord Jesus, forgive me if that sounds harsh. And I know people are going to get upset at me, but I try not to be politically correct. And I'm trying not to be unnecessarily offensive, but I want to call a spade a spade and I call it as I see it. So because of that, I have termed, I have coined the terms, may the Lord Jesus save me from stammering and anoint my mouth to speak clearly. Wash my mouth, Holy Spirit, and the Lord of my God, and save Lord Jesus Christ. I have coined the terms sola widia and <clears throat> sola widians. Sola widia means solely James White. Sola widians are those who subscribe to solely James White. So I coined the terms. So if you're going to start using those terms, it's copyrighted. You're going to have to give credit where credit is due. Sola widia and sola widians. Solely James White and those who subscribe to solely James White. So, guys, if you're going to use those terms, please give me credit. I coined those terms. I'm going to play a clip. I'm going to play a clip, a clip that was very hard for me to listen to because it confirms what I've said. Let me repeat. Thank you, James White, for introducing me to the church fathers. Now, again, I'm no scholar of the church fathers. Neither is James White. The sad fact is that James White goes around boasting about how he teaches church history. In light of the clip I'm about to play, you'll see why this man is dangerous. And I pray in Jesus' name I'm not sinning when I say that, but to be as honest as possible, because you're going to see what he does to the church fathers. And if this man is teaching Protestants, church history, I feel sorry for those Christians who have to listen to James White teach them church history. Because you're going to see it. I'm going to play the clip. I'm going to give you the link. You'll see. Watch what this man does to Justin Martyr. He thinks he's refuting Trent Horn. Guys, please ask Holy Spirit to fill us. Ask Holy Spirit to guide us. Ask Holy Spirit to save me from error and save me from my own pride and arrogance. So that I don't, I don't become the thing I hate, but to be broken and humble before our Lord Jesus Christ. Because God hates pride. He loves humbleness. Okay. I want you to pay attention to how many logical fallacies James White is going to commit in this session. Red herrings, straw man, <clears throat> to name just a few. 
ad hominem, you name it. He's a master of it. And it's sad that he's become blinded from seeing how inconsistent, deceitful, and dishonest he's become in his argumentation. And how he butchers the fathers in order to avoid dealing with the implication of their statements. Statements that show that his view of the Bible is not consistent with the ancient apostolic church's position, the view of the church historically, the view of those men who were heirs of the apostles and their followers. Right? I'm going to show you by the grace and mercy of our God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now watch here. We're going to play it. I want you to put your thinking caps on. Listen to how many logical fallacies he brings up to avoid the plain implication of Justin Martyr's statements. Are you ready? You ready now? Okay. Let me give you the clip. It really bothered me to listen to him. I have to be honest. But I'm going to do it for your sake. Let's get the clip. Let me just get there. Hold on. Let me get there. Pray for me now. I need you to pray. Holy Spirit, fill me. Save me from error. To interpret the scriptures correctly. To spot all the errors and lies and deceit. And that he'll sanctify us. And perfect us in his truth for the glory of Jesus Christ. Let me just get it. Because my time is fleeting. I have to leave the hotel room. But here you go. Leave the hotel room. Oops. Oh, this is me. Oops, I'm watching myself. <laughs> okay. Okay, here's the link. I'll put the link in the description box. Okay. I'll put the link in the description box. There it goes. Save the link. Watch it. We're going to go slow. Okay, let's do this. One second. These commercials. Ah. Okay. He spoke Roman Catholics and evangelicals agreements and differences. All right. Okay, here. He's responding to Trent Hoare. Watch this. And Ralph McKenzie spoke Roman Catholics and evangelicals agreements and differences. All right. This is what he says about the mass. The description of the mass as a sacrifice is found as early as Gregory the Great, uh, who lived in the sixth uh, century. And then he says the notion of the mass eventually became standard doctrine of the Western church. Okay. Understand what Trent Horn is responding to. <clears throat> Guys, ask the Holy Spirit to illuminate you how to think critically and honestly. He's responding to Norman Geisler, Ralph McKenzie's claim. Let me repeat. This is a citation from their book, Roman Catholics and Evangelicals, page 293. I gave you the clip. It's there. But I want you to listen. Listen. To what he's responding to. Now watch James White's rabbit trails, red herrings, smoke, smoke screens, straw men, wickedly dishonest argumentation. The description of the mass as a sacrifice is found as early as Gregory the Great, 540, 604 AD. He's responding to that assertion that the mass as a sacrifice is found in the 6th century, Gregory the Great. This notion of the mass as sacrifice eventually became standard doctrine of the Western church. So keep in mind, let's see if you guys are thinking critically. What is Trent Horn refuting? The assertion that the mass as the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus, which we reoffer to the Father for post-baptismal sins, is found in the 6th century. Implication, implication, you can't find it earlier, right? You understand what Trent Horn is dealing with? I want to see I'm going slow because I want to make sure you understand what Trent Horn is addressing and James White's rabbit trails. I don't know if this man is doing it deliberately, so God is handing him over to discipline, or he is so blinded to his own tradition he cannot see. Okay, now you understand what he's addressing, right? Is it true that the mass is a sacrifice? is something that you find in the 6th century from Gregory the Great, which implies you can't find it earlier. Now let's see what Trent Horn is going to say. Watch here. Now, as they say in the old Connect Four commercial, pretty sneaky, sis. Okay, Listen. that would be a Trent Horn joke. 
that goes over about as well as a Jerry Maddox joke. <laughs> that James I have no funny. idea what in the world he was referring to. And unless I'm missing some real goofaz, didn't seem anybody else did either. Um, so, you know, there you go. Uh, yeah. This is true in a sense. I wanted to say it's a whopper, but the way it's phrased, yes, the state the description of the mass of the sacrifice is found as early as Gregory the Great. The problem is when you read that, Okay, now understand what Chen Horn was saying. Pretty sneaky, sis, meaning it is a sneaky assertion, because it's true. Gregory the Great, in the 6th century, admitted the Mass is the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. But the way it's worded, the implication is that you won't find disbelief prior to the 6th century. You understand why he's saying pretty sneaky? Why is it sneaky? James White laughs. As if he didn't get the point. Okay. And I hope I'm helping you because I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to illuminate all our minds, to think critically, biblically, sober-mindedly, and honestly. Do you understand why Trent is saying this is a sneaky assertion? Do you understand why Trent Horn is saying this is a sneaky assertion? Because it's sneaky in that it is true. It's true. Gregory Great, the Great did say it's a sacrifice. But the implication is you won't find this believed or affirmed prior to that time. That's what makes it sneaky. You understand, guys, or no? H help me to make sure that I'm helping you. I want to make sure you're getting it, guys, honestly. I'm here to serve you. I'm here to do this for you out of my love for the Lord Jesus to serve you. So... I need feedback. That's why people tell me, well, turn off the comment section. No, I leave the comment section because that helps me gauge whether I'm helping you. Even though we get distracted and attacked by demons, we have to put up with those distractions because I really need to engage you because I want it like a class setting so I can know you're following along because I want to make sure you get this because if you get this and you understand this, then you can then absorb it and teach others. Okay. That's what Chen Horn was saying. What's not? What's there not to get? What's there not to get? How come James White didn't get it? What's not to get from that statement? Now watch what Trent Horn is going to do. Now watch James White's display of logical fallacies. And it's sad that it's gotten to this point where I have to now correct him. That it makes it sound like that's as early. It is found as early as that, but it's also found earlier. See? So it's not false. It's just highly misleading because you can okay so what would be the point of geiser and mckinsey <clears throat> their point would be that there has been sufficient time and development in roman catholic theology if they would use the term roman catholic theology catholic theology um to identify gregory's uh understanding of the Eucharist in a propitiatory or sacrificial way. Now, I'm not sure that's true. I'm going to give you a quote later on. But they're not saying that earlier centuries did not utilize sacrificial language. What they're saying is that the utilization of sacrificial language does not mean what it came to mean in developed Catholic theology regarding Eucharistic theology. Did you guys get all that from what was cited by Norm Geisler and Ralph McKenzie, all that James White poured into it? You see what Trent Horn quoted, and you see what James White is arguing. Trent Horn quoted a specific section from what Norm Geisler, Ralph McKenzie stated. What James White does in order to defend their assertion <clears throat> to give the impression that what Trent Horn is responding to doesn't sufficiently address what Geisler and McKenzie were stating, right? So notice what James just did. He had to add so much more information and detail to that particular citation from Geisler McKenzie that Trent Horn is focusing on 
in order to give the impression that Trent Horn is not refuting that assertion. See what he did? You understand the point, right? And you're going to see why he did that. So James White knows he cannot refute the fact that the fathers prior to the 6th century, the fathers prior to the 6th century did call the Mass, the Eucharist, a sacrifice. Right away, that refutes James White's view of the Eucharist. Right away, that's at odds with many Protestants' view of the Eucharist. Because in Protestantism, especially James White's tradition, the bread and the cup, in some places it's even grape juice, they are figures, symbols of the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. But they in themselves are not that sacrifice. And in the case of Certain Calvinists, they'll tell you that Jesus is spiritually present in the elements, but he's not physically present. So any citation of any church father prior to the 6th century who affirms that the Eucharist is not merely the symbols of the sacrifice, but it is the sacrifice of Jesus, refutes and exposes the man-made traditions of folks like James White. You see, you get my point? So you see the obfuscation here? Instead of letting Trent Horn address the particular citation by Geisler and McKenzie to show that they're in error about <clears throat> the Mass being viewed as the sacrifice of Jesus, and going into early church history, showing that the fathers affirmed that the Eucharist is the sacrifice of Jesus, James has to obfuscate by adding all these other details not present in the citation that Trent Horn is addressing because he knows he's in trouble. He knows that the attentive listener is going to hear James White cite Justin Martyr admitting that Justin Martyr viewed the Eucharist as a sacrifice, and the attentive listener is going to say, uh-oh, hold on here. If Justin Martyr, who is closer to the Apostles' time than James White and John Calvin, if Justin Martyr who would have known the bishops either appointed by the Apostles or those bishops appointed by the heirs of the Apostles, is saying this is the view of the church, not just his isolated opinion. That means the church universally believed that the bread and the cup are the actual sacrifice of our Lord. The gig is up. James White's man-made tradition has been totally refuted. You see the obfusc obfuscation? See what he's doing here? Guys, get rid of all the demons and the trolls, please. We don't have time for distractions because my time is running out. You see? You see the obfuscation here? Are you catching it? And I'm trying to go slow and systematically and repeat myself. See here, Jeremy just said, I'm Protestant. This is mind-blowing. Exactly. Jeremy, if you look beyond the rhetoric, the smoke and mirrors, the red herrings, the obfuscation, you're going to hear James White, and we're going to listen to him, admit that Justin Martyr affirmed that the Eucharist is the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to admit it. But watch the tap dance. We haven't even gotten into the tap dance. This is why... James White is a blessing to Catholics, Orthodox, Coptics, and Church of the East because those astute listeners will see through the smoke screen and hear James White cite fathers holding views that are closer to what Catholics, Orthodox, Coptic, Church of the East, Church, Coptic Church, and Church of the East believe about the Eucharist, contradicting James White, even though. He tries to <clears throat> explain it away. Watch here. 
Let's continue. But I want you to pay attention. Apology and Eucharistic sacrifice and uh, especially the massive changes that take place with the rise of Aristotelian theology in the church becoming popular and becoming definitional and hence the concept of transubstantiation and all of that. It okay. He's, he, you notice again the obfuscation and the smoke screen. Later on, the Catholic Church is going to introduce the monstrance, and also they're going to argue along the lines of Aristotelian logic, difference between accidents and substance, and therefore <clears throat> coming up with the concept of transubstantiation. But I want you to pay attention. Watch here. He's going to cite Justin Martyr using the word transmutation. Okay. I want you to pay attention. He's going to quote James uh, Justin Martyr referring to the transmutation of the figures, the elements. Now, folks, last time I checked, transmutation is synonymous with, with transubstantiation. Maybe it's just me. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. Though I wasn't born yesterday, I was born the day before. But watch. I'll try not to stop it too much because my time is fleeting. I may have to do a part two. Is at the turn of the millennium, um, which is still 400 years in the future at the time of Gregory. So there's probably that context that needs to be allowed to speak back much further than Gregory the Great, you can go to St. Justin Martyr, for example, in his dialogue with Trifo the rabbi, he talks about how the mass that Catholics celebrate, and read Justin Martyr, first apology on the mass, a point for point correspondence to how we celebrate the mass today. It's truly striking. He talks about how the, okay, now that was just thrown out there for the fun of it. Watch what he's going to do. Okay, with bring that down. Um, but so, you know, someone says go read what Justin said. And he's going to read it for I us. I have and this prove idea his point. of going, go ahead and bring that down, uh, of going ahead and doing that. And so here is uh, that uh, material. I, I don't know how to, in this type of a window, um, well, wait a minute. Actually, I can. Watch yeah. here. All right. That's about as big as I'm going to be able to get it. Here is the section he's referring to, okay? Um, and it is interesting. This is his first apology. This is, so, so you won't be confused. The main point he's going to address. Okay. All of Justin Martyr's writings that have been translated in English, you can read online for free. Go to newadvent.org, newadvent.org, and they have a section on the Church Fathers that have been translated in English. So this is there online for free. So pay attention. Is a quotation from Justin's dialogue with Trifo the Jew. But then he just in passing said you should read his, and it sounded like he was saying his first apology of the Eucharist. It was just his first apology. And then in the first apology are all these different chapters. And toward the very end, this is, Third Watch chapter it. from the end, actually. Look what he's um, going to say. Look at his a admission. brief section Protestants, on the Eucharist. Look at his the admission. The Eucharistia. So notice he says, this food is called among us Eucharistia. That is a beautiful biblical term. Of which no one is allowed to partake, but the man who believes that the things which we teach are true. And who has been washed with the washing, which that is for the remission of sins and unto regeneration. And who is so living as Christ has enjoined. Watch this. So there is a limitation. Listen. As to who can partake of the Eucharist. It is not, as in many liberal churches today, simply actually used as a evangelistic tool. I remember getting into an argument with a professor from Fuller, probably one of the very last classes that I took at Fuller, um, because he was presenting the idea uh, that it was actually sinful. Watch here, guys. Watch um, the admission. 
for uh, battery death. <laughs> um, on the uh, focus, guys. Beep. <laughs> yep. Once it goes down just one, it just then goes <laughs> down to the bottom. So I just watched it, just watched it happen. So um, anyway, he was, uh, the professor was arguing that uh, it's sinful to restrict anyone from coming to the Lord's table. Of course, I was, had just become a Reformed Baptist at that time, and we guarded the table. And uh, so we, we had, he and I had an in-class debate. <laughs> you could still do that back then at Fuller. I don't think you'd get away with it anymore, but you could back then. Anyway, listen to this. Uh, but you also see his understanding of baptism. Justin has a regenerational understanding of baptism. That's not, that's not even a question. Did you hear what he just said? Did you guys hear the admission? Did you hear it? Protestants, that should trouble you. Did you hear what he just said? James White just admitted Justin Martyr held to water baptismal regeneration. Protestants, open up your ears. He couldn't deny it. He can't get away from it. Did you hear what he just said? And let me give you the article that I wrote on this. Here's my blog post. Please, you have my permission, take all my materials, take all my sessions, upload them, make clips out of them, translate them. Here's the post I wrote citing the church fathers and their view of John chapter 3, verse 5. And the title is Early Church Fathers on John 3, verse 5 and Water Baptism. I cite Justin Martyr, who among many other church fathers interpreted the words of our Lord Jesus in John 3, 5, that you must be born of water and spirit to mean water baptism. He just admitted, guys, why, do I, why have I said in the past, and I'm going to say it again, and here's the proof. James White helped me to see that my Protestantism is not thoroughly biblical, nor is it historical. Because in his arrogance, he thinks that when he debates Catholics, he schools them. But he doesn't understand that when he gives them a platform to cite the church fathers, and then he has to concede that the church fathers taught certain things, he is being used by the Spirit to bring people back to these apostolic traditions. And now you heard the proof from what I've been saying, that for years, these statements of the church fathers troubled my conscience. You get it? But what he did not emphasize is that Justin Martyr wasn't giving, giving his mere, mere opinion. I'm going to go back and have him read what Justin Martyr stated. Justin Martyr was saying, this is the view of the universal church. Justin Martyr is speaking as a representative of the church as a whole at that time. He's saying that the churches would not allow anyone to partake of the Eucharistia, the Eucharist, and notice Justin called it Eucharist. Eucharisteo in Greek means Thanksgiving. So Christians, if you want to know why it's called Eucharist, because the church fathers called it Eucharist. And James White just read the Greek of Justin Martyr, where he called the Lord's Supper Eucharistia, Eucharistia. Are you guys paying attention or no? Because I'm going to replay that clip again. Did you pay attention? Two facts I want you to pay attention to. Fact number one, Justin Martyr calls the Lord's Supper Eucharistia, Eucharist. Number two, Justin Martyr is not giving his isolated opinion. He is representing the church as a whole and saying that the church universally of his day would forbid Eucharist to anyone who did not believe the truth that the church proclaimed and was not baptized in water unto regeneration by the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? The church believed you needed to be baptized in water 
in order to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit to regenerate you and make you alive and unite you to Christ. And this was the view of the church. Let me play it again. And yet he thinks, this is what's killing me, he thinks he's refuting and proving his position. Let's go back again. Let's see. Here it goes. Is allowed to partake, but the man who believes on the Eucharist. Here it goes. The U his, and it sounded like he was saying his first apology of the Eucharist. It was just his first apology. And then in the first apology are all these different chapters. And toward the very end, this is third chapter from the end, actually. Well, watch here again. Um, a the horse's brief mouth. section on the Eucharist. The Eucharistia. So Eucharistia. Notice he says this food is called among us Eucharistia. Did you hear it? He's quoting Justin Martyr saying, This food is called among us. Who's the us? James White, the early church. What is it called? Eucharistia. That is a beautiful biblical term. Of which no one is allowed to partake, but the man who believes that the things which we teach are true and who has been washed with the washing, which that is for the remission of sins and unto regeneration and who is so living as Christ has enjoined. Did you catch what Justin Martyr stated? Let me read. Believes that the things which we teach are true. And it's all on a screen, by the way. I gave you the link. Notice. What Justin Martyr is saying, the view of the church universal is. And who has been washed with the washing that is for the remission of sins. Washed in the ba baptismal waters. Waters that they believe God used to wash you of your sins. And regenerated you. You've been washed with the washing that is for the remission of sins unto regeneration. The church believed <clears throat> that God used water baptism to wash of your sins and confer on you the Holy Spirit who made you alive and made you one with Christ and who is so living as Christ has enjoined. Now, let me continue. Let him continue. So there is a limitation as to who can partake of the Eucharist. It is not, as in many liberal churches today, simply actually used as a evangelistic tool. I remember getting into an argument with a professor from Fuller, probably one of the very last classes that I took at Fuller, um, because Listen. he was presenting the idea uh, that it was actually sinful um, for... <laughs> battery death. <laughs> um on the uh, deep, deep. <laughs> yep once it goes down just one it just then goes <laughs> down to the bottom so get ready I just watch just watched it happen Protestants so, listen to um, this anyway he was uh, the professor was arguing listen. that uh it's sinful to restrict anyone from coming to the Lord's table of course I was had just become a reformed Baptist at that time and we guarded the table and uh so we we had he and I had an in-class debate. <laughs> you could still do that back then at Fuller. I don't think you'd get away with it anymore, but you could back then. Anyway, uh, but you also see his understanding of baptism. Justin has a regenerational understanding of baptism. That's not, that's not even a question. Did you hear that? Justin had a view of water baptism that's regenerational. That's not even a question. And for Rishu and others who want to argue, you cannot quote a single church father, even up until the time of Martin Luther, that represented the true Christian faith that denied water baptismal regeneration. You can't do it. So stop arguing and listen. Don't debate in the comment section. Do you hear it, folks? You hear it? Well, now, James White is presented with a dilemma. Either that's a false gospel, like James White believes, and therefore Justin Martyr and the church universally were proclaiming a false gospel, 
and they didn't know what the gospel was, and he better not use the pathetic argument, well, they didn't have a full canon. What does a full canon have to do with the fact that he makes allusion to the gospels as well as Revelation, and it's pretty much an argument from silence just because Mark, Justin Martyr doesn't mention the books that he was in possession of doesn't mean that he didn't have access to those books. But beyond that, even those after Justin Martyr with a quote-unquote fuller canon, Athanasius believed the same thing. It's nothing but a red herring, a smokescreen. That means either James White's gospel is false or their gospel is false, something he won't dare address because of its implications. Because if he says water baptismal regeneration is a false gospel, then he has to admit that the church universally became apostate, and he has to go the route of the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons and Seventh-day Adventists and become a restorationist. But for him, the church was restored during the Reformation, which then means Jesus failed to preserve his church, or James White's gospel is false, and the church fathers were right. You see the problem? You see the problem now? Let's continue. I hope you're seeing the problem, folks. For not as common bread and common drink do we receive these. So in other words, it's not like just going down to the... Okay. You hear what he's saying? A.S.K. Jalo. Tell your mother to tell you which she a fathered a filthy scum whore like you, you satanic bastard of the devil. Lord Jesus, break your mouth for his glory. Yep, James, I'm not like you, a fake. I call a spade a spade. Listen to what he said, James, uh, Justin Martyr said about the Eucharistia. Listen. Ancient equivalent. Drink. Listen. Do we receive these? For not as common bread and common drink. Do we receive these? Did you catch it? Justin Martyr says that the Eucharist is not received as common bread or common drink. Not as common bread or common drink do we receive these. And who is Justin Martyr talking to? Trifo the Jew. Trifo the Jew. Did you hear it? Justin Martyr says, not as common bread or common drink do we who's we the church at that time do we receive these pay attention so in other words it's not like just going down to the ancient equivalent of mcdonald's and picking up some fish and chips or something uh for not as common bread and common drink to receive these but in like manner as jesus christ our savior having been made flesh by the word of god had both flesh and blood for our salvation. So likewise have we been taught that the food which is blessed by the prayer of his word, notice it's food, and from which our blood and flesh by transmutation are nourished, that is by digestion, is the flesh and blood of that Jesus who was made flesh. Bam! Did you hear it? Did you hear it? Let me read that part because it's on the screen. So likewise... Have we been taught that the food which is blessed by the prayer of his word and from which are blood and flesh by transmutation. See, he tried to skip over that. By transmutation, which is simply another way of saying transubstantiation. Is the flesh and blood of that Jesus who was made flesh. It is not common bread or drink, but by the blessing of the prayer of his word, our blood and flesh is nourished because it is transmutated and is the flesh and blood of that Jesus who was made flesh. You caught it? Let it sink in. You caught it? Now watch the tap dance. Watch the deceitful argumentation. Watch the red herrings, the smoke screens, the straw man. Watch. 
You paying attention? Watch, listen, as Holy Spirit illuminates us. And if you have people who don't want to listen, but want to be right at the expense of truth, get them out of here. We don't need them here. We don't need their distractions. Pay attention. For the apostles and the memoirs composed by them, which are called gospels. By the way, this is important because Justin's middle is 150-ish, so smack down in the middle of the second century. So notice he knows that there are multiple gospels. Have thus delivered unto us what was enjoined upon them, that Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, said, This do ye in remembrance of me. This is my body, and that after the same manner, having taken the cup and given thanks, he said, This is my blood, and gave it to them. Which the wicked devils... Okay, you see how fast he's reading that part? Where did Justin Martyr get this from? Now, he's trying to read it so fast, and he's going to explain it away, because he sees it's really devastating to his man-made tradition, his perversion of the gospel. Justin Martyr is saying to uh, try for the Jew, we got this from the apostles in their memora memoirs, the memoirs of the apostles, the gospels. He calls the gospels the mem memoirs of the apostles they're the ones who taught taught us this in the memoirs of the apostles which are the gospels where they tell us the lord jesus said this is my body this is my blood so where did justin martyr get this from where did the church that he's representing get it from the memoirs of the apostles as found in the gospels which are their memoirs preserved by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And it's there we read our Lord saying, this is my body, this is my blood. You get it? Now watch how he's going to explain it away. To have imitated in the mysteries of Mithras, commanding the same thing to be done. For that bread and a cup of water are placed with certain incantations in the mystic rites of one who is being initiated you either know or can learn. Now, what Justin is saying is, even the pagans who follow the god Mithra took our beliefs, perverted them, and attributed them to Mithra so that they, too, started teaching that they must ingest, right? <clears throat> Mithra mystically as we do it's right here let me read what it says which the wicked devils have imitated in the mysteries of mithras so the followers mithras took our beliefs our mysteries and then perverted them and attributed to mithras to make mithras analogous to the lord jesus christ because they command the same thing to be done right so they too take bread and water and then ascribe it to the body of Mithras for their followers to ingest in order to imitate us. Notice it's the followers of Mithras imitating Christians, taking Christian doctrines and perverting them and attributing to Mithras. It's not Christians getting it from the pagans. Everyone got that part? Because we got more. We're almost done. Can I continue? If you're if you're following with me, if you're learning. If you're focusing by the power of the Spirit, because I, I, I'm doing this honestly to be used of the Spirit to bless you, and I hope it's blessing you. And I hope that you're learning how to spot bad arguments, deceitful, dishonest arguments, red herrings, straw men, and smoke screens in order to mislead you from the plain teaching of these fathers. And sadly, James White has become a master of distortion. May the Lord grant him repentance or give him what he deserves. The Lord's will be done. Okay, watch here. Let's continue. There's a the whole thing. So I everybody looks at that and they go, well, you need to talk about this, I, this section here about transmutation. And it's interesting uh, because in the note uh, that is found in the Shaft series, where there are a number of people that did the editing, um, there is a quotation of Galatius. Now, Galatius was Bishop of Watch Rome in AD 490. So he is, um, what, 50 years uh, earlier um, as far as Bishop of Rome than when we were just discussing uh, a moment ago, Gregory. 
But notice what Galatius wrote in 490. By the sacraments, we are made partakers. You, you won't be able to see this in the footnote at the bottom, but by the sacraments, we are made partakers. Notice the distractions and the attacks. Noise outside, horn blowing, people upstairs above me making noise like it's going out of style. No, this is all satanic distraction because Satan is angry. Glory to Jesus Christ may save us from the attacks of the evil one and shield us by the power of the blood of his cross in Jesus' name. Of the divine nature, and yet the substance and nature of bread and wine do not cease to be in them. Okay, now notice what James White just did. Okay, folks, pay attention to the smoke screen, the red herring. Trent Horn is discussing Justin Martyr's view. James White just referenced the note found in Philip Schaff's edition about Pope Galatius's denial of transubstantiation. Catch the trick. See, people don't see this. Was Trent Horn addressing the view of Pope Galatius? Or was he addressing the assertion of Norm Geisler, Ralph McKenzie, and stating that the, the view that the Eucharist is a sacrifice is 6th century, which is true, it, it's found in 6th century, giving the readers the impression that this wasn't the view of the church universally prior to that. So then Trent Horn corrects it by going to Justin Martyr in the 2nd century when his dialogue with Trifo the Jew affirms that the bread... And the cup are not ordinary bread, ordinary cup, but the actual body and flesh and blood of Jesus Christ, and it is a sacrifice. You see what he just did? Do you see the dishonesty? Do you see the deceit? Do you see the smoke screen, the red herrings? Do you see that? Are you catching what he's doing, the sleight of hand? In order to get his fan base off the trail, because the attentive listener is going to be thinking, wait, Justin Martyr in the second century affirmed water baptismal regeneration, and James White, you reject that as a false gospel? Wait, James, Justin Martyr, speaking on behalf of the church, says to trifle the Jew, the church believes that the bread and the cup after the blessing of prayer, according to Jesus' word, is the actual flesh and blood of Jesus for our nourishment. This is what they believe. As early as the second century. Really? This is what they believe? So let me get you off the trail. Oh, but Galatius. You see? Do you see the deceit, the trickery? Are you seeing it? Because... I'm hoping the Holy Spirit will perfect our ability to think critically, to think biblically, and to spot these deceitful tricks and logical fallacies. You get my point? Okay, let's continue, though. Let's continue. This is Galatius writing... Uh, 440 years after Paul. Let's put it, uh, if we want to have a time frame there to look at. Even the citation of Pope Galatius doesn't deny that Pope Galatius believed the Eucharist is the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. Did you catch the red herring? What he's trying to do is he's trying to get Catholics to see that one of their popes did not hold to transubstantiation in order to shake their foundation. Okay, can I comment on that on behalf of Catholics? Can I explain <clears throat> for the Catholics why this isn't really a problem? You ready? Let me explain. Are you ready? Let me give you all the logical fallacies that James White is operating under. You guys ready? Can you hear me? I just want to make sure. I don't know. I don't see anybody. No comments. Let's see. Am I something wrong with my comment section? Did I lose it? Oops. I guess I lost you guys. Okay. Okay. I don't know. All right. Here. 
Number one, even if Pope Galatius denied transubstantiation, that doesn't mean the Pope denied that it is the actual sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. All James White is proving is that one particular Pope held to consubstantiation because nothing in what was cited shows that Pope Galatius did not believe that after prayer that the bread and the cup are the actual flesh and blood of Christ. All he's showing is that though Pope Galatius believed it, he didn't believe it because it was transmutated into the flesh and blood of Christ. He may have believed in consubstantiation. Are you with me there? So at most, what he gets with this citation is a pope who may not have believed in transubstantiation, but it doesn't mean that pope denied the bread and the cup are the actual flesh and blood of Christ, and that the way the bread and the cup become the flesh and blood of Christ is not that their substances are changed into another substance, but their substances are joined to the substance of Jesus' flesh and blood. In other words, he still believed it's a sacrifice, and he still believed it's the flesh and blood of Christ due to consubstantiation. That's number one. Number two, this does nothing to refute the other apostolic traditions who may not believe in everything that Roman Catholicism teaches about the Mass, but still, nonetheless, believe the Mass is the sacrifice of our Lord and that the bread and the wine are the body, the flesh, and blood of Jesus. Number three, no Catholic believes that the statement of a pope in isolation is dogmatic and definitional for the church as a whole. You get my point? No Catholic believes that the isolated statement, the isolated opinion of a pope is dogmatic and definitional for the Catholic Church as a whole. And don't take my word for it. Ask the Catholics here. They're here. Okay. Do you see the problem with him appealing to Pope Galatius? You see why it's a red herring, smoke and mirrors, deceitful to get you off the trail? What was the trail? Justin Martyr and his statements about what the church believed in the second century. So let me get you off that trail. Let me get you off that path and bring up an irrelevant issue in order to get you to forget the implication Justin Martyr has on James' theology, because Justin Martyr condemns James' theology as unbiblical teachings based on the traditions of men. You see the point? See what he just did? Exactly. Nothing to see here. Let's continue. I hope you guys are benefiting from this. Vartan, he's been doing it so long, it's now become second nature to him. It's instinctive for him to use such deceitful tactics. He can't help himself anymore. He's so encrusted in his rhetoric and his deceit. This may be a sign that God is handing him over to discipline. Rishu, do you want to get out of here, Rishu? I've read William Webster. Do you want me to block you? And you want to get out of here? Um, so that is... Of course, an important thing to look at. What is he referring to here? Watch here. But let's back up a second. Let's back up. Just like when we debate Jehovah's Witnesses. Notice now, classic James White, deceit, dishonesty, red herrings, smoke and mirrors. Do you see what he did? Let me remind you what the context was. Let me remind you what the context was. The context was Justin Martyr. Watch what James White's going to do here. And if this doesn't disgust you and repulse you, I don't know what will. If this doesn't disgust you, if this doesn't repulse you, I don't know what will. Watch. Watch the red herrings, the smoke screen, the straw man. Okay, watch. 
The focus of Trent Horn was Justin Martyr. Did he address Justin Martyr's explicit affirmation that the bread and the cup are the flesh and the blood of Christ? And then he's going to cite Justin Martyr elsewhere, affirming it's a sacrifice mentioned in Malachi 1.11. No. Did he address the implication of Justin Martyr saying water baptism removes your sin and brings about the regeneration of the Holy Spirit by which you're made alive and united to Christ? No. Note what he's going to do now. Watch. Pay attention. Watch. The Jehovah's Witnesses often get to determine for us what in a text we're going to argue about. We're always on the back foot defending. And I've, I've said for years and years and years, you need to require of them to give the same level of response to any text that, that they're asking of you. What's watch, missing here? Watch here. Watch. Because uh, uh, Trent told us this is, this is just, this is exactly what we do in, in the math. Really? No, that's not what Trent said. Notice the straw man. That's not what Trent said. Trent said that the Eucharist as the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ, that in the Mass we are celebrating the sacrifice of Jesus that he offered for our sins, and that the Eucharist is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ is the ancient faith of the church. That's what Trent was addressing. Now watch here. Where's the priest? Where's the priest? Where's the priest? Where is there a sacramental priesthood here? Because see, a lot. Did you catch it? Where's the priest? You see what he did? Did you catch it? Uh, where's the priest? Why is that relevant to the point that Justin Martyr believe Justin Martyr believed that the bread and the wine are the flesh and blood of Jesus offered to nourish our flesh and blood. What does that got to do with the point of Trent Horn? You caught it? When I listened to it last night, I could not control myself. I go, I have to expose this guy. I have to expose his dishonesty. This is so wickedly dishonest, it's on the level of being satanic. May God have mercy on him. It's going to get worse, and I'll address where the priest is. A lot of Roman Catholic historians and theologians will admit that the concept, concept of a sacramental, sacerdotal priesthood developed over time not in a uniform fashion. It is not a New Testament concept by any stretch of the imagination. And that would be a good debate. Did you catch it? Honestly, help me understand. Maybe I'm stupid. Honestly, I'm being honest. Can you explain to me what relevance does this make on the issue of Justin Martyr affirming that the bread and the wine are the flesh and blood of Jesus Christ. What does the assertion that there was no sacerdotal priesthood in the early centuries of the church, but it's a later development, have to do with Trent Horn's point? Honestly, help me understand. Again, and uh, Creator, we're going to get to that. He's going to quote Justin Martyr talking about Malachi 1, which is going to backfire. No, honestly, help me. Honestly, help me. I'm being honest. My brothers... I'm being honest. Please help me see. Maybe I'm not seeing it. Maybe I'm too angry with James White to give him a fair shake. Okay. What does the assertion that the sacerdotal priesthood, a priesthood that offers the sacraments, being a later development, a later tradition, not found in the early centuries of the church, have to do with the point what was the point? Do we find early affirmation 
such as the case with Justin Martyr, that the bread and the cup called Eucharistia, Eucharist, are the flesh and the blood of Jesus Christ. And according to Justin Martyr, by transmutation, i.e. transubstantiation, after the blessing of the prayer of Christ's word, for the nourishment to feed us, to feed our flesh and blood, and feed us spiritually. Am I missing something here? And to answer the question, let me answer this question. Are you ready? Are you ready for me to answer this question? Folks, we got about another 40 minutes and I got to wrap things up. You know where the priest is? The bishop. The bishop is the priest. How do I know? If I use James White's logic, it's called the priesthood of believers. And write down these references. We won't look at them. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 to 10. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 to 10. Write these down, guys. Okay. Revelation chapter 5, verses 9 to 10. Revelation chapter 5, verses 9 to 10. Write these down. Revelation 20, verse 6. Revelation 20, verse 6. Romans 12, verses 1 to 2. Romans 12, verse 1 to 2. States that all who are believers are spiritual priests called to offer spiritual sacrifices and offer their bodies as living sacrifices as worship to God. Can I ask you guys a question? Is the bishop part of the spiritual body of Christ? And is the bishop a priest called to offer himself as a sacrifice to Christ? And as the leader of the church, isn't that part of his priestly work? And as the one commissioned to give the Eucharist, wouldn't that be one of his functions as a priest? Therefore, there's your priest, James White, the bishop. So what's your point? What's your argument? What's your argument? What's your point? Where's the priest? In front of your eyes, the bishop. Unless you're going to deny that the bishop is also part of the priesthood of believers. You can't do that because if he's born of the Spirit, united to Christ, he too is a priest. And part of his priestly functions, part of his priestly role, part of his priestly duty is to offer up the Eucharist for the spiritual members of the body of Christ. You see how pathetically bad his argument is? Do you see the problem? Do you, and by the way, Joe, we'll sc schedule an interview for April, Lord willing, when I'm in Florida. I haven't forgotten you, brother. I'll, I'll, I'm going to reach out to you. Okay. Now, do you understand why when I hear this guy, I can't swallow his arguments anymore? As much as I love this guy, as much as I used to consider him a friend, I cannot listen to him anymore. You see? Neither should you tolerate such deceitful, dishonest argumentation. Okay, Carolyn, write down Romans 12, verses 1 to 2. Romans 12, verses 1 to 2. 1 Peter 2, verse 5. 1 Peter 2, verses 9 to 10. Revelation chapter 5, verses 9 to 10, and Revelation 20, verse 6. Okay. Now, again, guys, maybe I'm being overly critical and harsh. But help me, honestly, I'm asking you honestly. Again, can you help me to see what does the sacerdotal priesthood, a priesthood offering the sacraments, supposedly being later in time, have to do with the point at hand. Am I missing something? Or do you see it for what it is? Red herrings, smoke screens, smoke and mirrors, straw men, in other words, simply dishonest, deceitful, fallacious arguments in order to deceive his fan base from seeing what the real issue is at hand. 
Everyone got it? Everyone seeing this? So can we move on to a few more minutes? Because I may not be able to finish the entire segment here. All right. You know, Mitch Paco and I did the priesthood back in late 90s, around there. And so what you did? Early 2000s. I forget, forget exactly when it was. We did the priesthood. But that was a good, friendly debate. That would be a good debate to have. Does the New Testament teach a sacramental priesthood? Um, exactly. I'd be willing time. to go on that real fast if Trent would like to do something. Um, test out our, our facilities. Uh, does, does uh, let, let's do something on the subject of priesthood. That'd be good. Um, but there's no priest here. So the bishop is not a priest. Guys, according to White, the implication of a statement, the bishop is not a priest. But hold on, Dr. White. Don't you believe in the priesthood of believers? All believers born in spirit are priests called to offer spiritual sacrifices as part of their priestly work, their priestly role? Yes. Now, Dr. White, is the bishop a member of the body of Christ? Yes. Is he too a spiritual priest? Yes. And as he discharges his role as bishop, in exercising his role, role as bishop in the power of the Holy Spirit, is he not performing priestly functions? In other words, to do what he's commanded to do as a bishop. Isn't that part and parcel of his priestly work? Yes. So that means it's part of his priestly work to administer the Eucharist. There goes your argument, decimated and buried, Dr. White. So much for that pathetic red herring. So how can you have the modern concept of the Mass with transubstantiation if you do not have a priest to bring about the miracle of transubstantiation? Uh, let's think about that. Hmm. How can you have the, the Eucharist becoming the flesh and blood of Christ if you don't have the Roman Catholic view of the sacerdotal priesthood. Uh, excuse me, uh, Dr. White. Yes. According to your logic, there was no sacerdotal priesthood at the time of Justin Martyr, right? No, there wasn't. Now, guys, watch how this is going to destroy his deceitful argumentation. Watch. So there was no sacerdotal priesthood at the time of Justin Martyr, as we find in the modern understanding or in the modern sense of priesthood. Exactly. And yet, Dr. White, didn't you just quote Justin Martyr, still believing that the bread and the wine transmutate into the flesh and blood of Jesus? Yeah, I did. And yet, Justin Martyr believed that still took place without the modern understanding of priesthood? Yes, so what is your argument exactly, Dr. White? Wait, so what's your argument exactly, Dr. White? So you're saying the modern sense of a priest, this modern-day priesthood, did not exist at the time of Justin Martyr. And you're using that to refute Trent Horn's belief that the bread and the wine transmutate into the flesh and blood of Christ. Yes. But did you just not read Justin Martyr, James White, admitting to Trifle the Jew that the bread and the cup transmutate into the flesh and blood of Christ by the blessing of the prayer of who? The bishop. So then how did Justin Martyr believe he was eating the flesh and the blood of Christ when the bishop prayed for the bread and wine to transmutate into the flesh and blood of Christ when, according to you, there was no priesthood in the modern sense, and yet Justin Martyr didn't think like you, did he, James White? You got it? You see how embarrassing this guy has become. You see how pathetically bad his logic is. Are you catching it or no?
Are you catching it? Okay. You see how he just destroyed his own argument? I, I hope it's making sense because I'm going to have to do a part two. I don't think I'm going to be able to finish this today because my time is running out. But I don't want to rush through this. Okay. You understand how he just buried his argument? Guys, let me bring, because I'm going to repeat myself like a broken record. I hope, James White, you're listening. And I hope you try to respond to this because you're going to try, but you're going to fail like you consistently do in defending your man-made traditions. Okay. He admitted to you, let me bring out the implication. He admitted to you that the modern sense of priesthood, this modern-day priesthood, did not exist at the time of Justin Martyr. Then he tried to use that to prove, well, that means the Roman Catholic understanding of the Eucharist being the flesh and blood of Christ cannot be sustained because there was no priest to pray over the elements for it to then be transformed into the blood and body of Christ. But didn't he just read for us Justin Martyr in the second century? The time in history which he claims <clears throat> there was no priesthood in the modern sense of priesthood. And didn't he quote Justin Martyr as believing that when the bishop prayed, because the implication is that the bishop is praying, the blessing of prayer, that bread and cup transmutates into the flesh and blood of Christ, which means that Justin Martyr just destroyed James White's argument. So what is your argument exactly? Justin Martyr still believed that the bread and the cup transmutated into the flesh and blood of Jesus due to the prayer of the bishop. So he didn't have a problem with it becoming the actual flesh and blood of Jesus for our nourishment, even though, according to you, he didn't have a priest in the modern sense so what are you actually refuting james white what are you refuting guys can you help me understand what he's refuting what is he refuting what is his argument how is this refuting trent horn honestly help me maybe i'm not seeing it help me honestly help me brethren i'm again i'm not the sharpest tool in the shed can you explain to me what exactly he's refuting here? In fact, doesn't it now bury his argument? Doesn't it decimate his argument? And doesn't it expose him as someone who's more interested in being right and winning arguments than submitting to the truth? Okay, let's continue. If that sunk in and that made sense, say, so I'm going to repeat myself at least three or four times because I know we're creatures of repetition. We need to hear something repetitively until it sinks in by the power of the Holy Spirit for the glory of Jesus. Now let's continue. And why is it that we know historically? Because this is, this is where now watch looking right at the whole range of history is so helpful. Why is it that at this period of history, you do not have the reservation of consecrated hosts? Now, Protestants go, the what? Watch here. Watch this here. The, the, they had reservations back then? No, no. In modern Roman Catholicism, and those of you who are former Roman Catholics know, already know all this stuff, but Watch here. if you were never Roman Catholic, some of this stuff is just really esoteric to you. But um, I remember the first time that I visited a Roman Catholic church. Listen I think as a kid, or maybe I've been in Washington, D.C., went into one of the Catholic churches there just to see it. Uh, let me let me correct this this demon here who's slandering me. No la la nogma. It's not disagreeing with me, you wicked slanderer. It's people coming here attacking me, people coming here debating People coming here slandering, people coming here mocking the Lord Jesus and perverting scripture that get blocked. You can disagree with me and not believe what I believe, but this is not the place and time to debate me. Call me on Skype. We'll have a dialogue. 
So stop the slander. You're going to get exposed. And that was the first time I saw Listen someone come in and do the holy water and genuflect. They're bowing and they're crossing themselves. And of course, I was raised as a fundamentalist. And so that's like, what? But there's, there's nothing in the Bible about that. Watch here. And I had no idea why they were doing it. Well, most people don't. The reason they're doing that, now, of course, if in the middle of the mass, that's a little bit different. But if there's no service going on, they are acknowledging the presence of God. Watch here. In the consecrated host, it's in the monstrance, ciborium, tabernacle. There's all these different terms that are used, whether it's uh, whether it can be carried and you know, where it's at. And there's normally a light kept on in front of it. And that's so that the faithful can come and adore Christ because he's physically present with his people because of the doctrine of transubstantiation. Watch here. In the primitive church at this time, the elements would be taken to the sick. So the sick who could not come and partake the supper, the elements would be taken to them. But they were not taken in procession. They were not worshipped. Listen to this. And once delivered, if there was extra, it was not considered to be anything other than bread or wine. Okay. Before I comment, just watch here. Let me finish it. Let me let him finish his point. There are no monstrances. There's no ciboriums. There no picks, no tabernacles. Why not? Because that's a later doctrinal development. Did you notice what he did not say? You want to see the dishonesty again. Okay, guys. If you guys don't know how to think critically and biblically, this is going to go over your head and he's going to get away with lies. Okay. Did you notice what he did not say? He goes, why not? Because that's a later development. Do you see what he did not say? Do you see what he did not say? Did you catch it? See, I want to see if you're sharp by the part of the Holy Spirit illuminating your minds. You see what he did not say? He goes, the monstrance, the tabernacle, later development, right? And you see what he said? He goes, why not? Because it's a later development. Did you see what he did not say? Who caught it? He did not say because they didn't believe it's the actual flesh and blood of Christ. Do you know why? He knows he can't because he just quoted to you Justin Martyr who said, the bread and the cup transmutate into the flesh and blood of Christ. Do you see the dishonesty? In other words, it's irrelevant whether the use of the monstrance or the tabernacle to venerate the bread and the cup as becoming the blood and body of Christ is a later development because that has nothing to do with the fact that in the second century, the Christians still believe that the bread and the cup are the actual flesh and blood of Christ. So then why bring this up? What does the later development of the monstrance or the tabernacle to house the Bread and the cup that now has become the body and the blood of Christ as a sign of showing reverence to it have to do with the plain, explicit affirmation by Justin Martyr and the Christians in the second century that the bread and the cup are transmutated into the body, flesh, and blood of Christ. Can you uh, honestly help me? I'm, uh, guys, I'm asking you honestly. Can you help me see? Am I missing something here? And did you notice what he did not say? Why didn't they have the monstrance or the tabernacle or the sabor saborium? Why not? Notice he did not say because he knew he'd be lying because it's a later development. What's a later development, James? The use of the monstrance and the tabernacle? Okay, Catholics will grant that. But are you saying the belief that after the bishop prays for the bread and the cup to transmutate, transubstantiate into the flesh and blood of Christ, that is a later development and wasn't believed universally at the time of Justin Martyr? 
Of course he can't say that because he just quoted Justin Martyr affirming that. So now why, please, why, pray tell, did he bring up the monstrance, the saborium, and the tabernacle? Why? Can you explain that to me? Why? Do you understand? This is what we call a red herring, straw man, smoke and mirrors. And this guy claims to be a servant of the God of truth, who loves the truth, because he loves the God of truth, who argues equal weights and measures, and that we need to be consistent in our argumentation. And yet you see his propensity to lie, to deceive, and use logical fallacy after logical fallacy. But are you seeing through it? By the power of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, are you seeing through the smoke screen, the red herrings, the straw man, the obfuscation? Exactly, Credo. By his logic, church buildings would prove no Christians gathered together on Sunday. I just want to make sure you're seeing through the rhetoric. That's all I want. If you're seeing through the rhetoric and seeing how Justin Mar Martyr buried him and his man-made tradition, Justin Martyr is a thorn in James White's side. Justin Martyr shows that James' beliefs are man-made. They're not biblical. They're not historical. And he's now no longer a useful instrument for the church. So everyone got it? If you got it, I've accomplished my purpose. That's all I wanted to do. So you don't fall for his rhetoric. A few more minutes because then I got to wrap it up and I'll do a part two. Let's continue. Exactly, Sonia. He also forgets we weren't able to worship in the first, in, first three centuries. Actually, fourth century. You're right. The church was under persecution, having to live in caves, run for their lives. But let's... Ignore all that. Yep. And then forget the fact that he cannot show you an ambiguous, explicit statements from the church fathers affirming his view of sola scriptura and his view of perseverance of the saints and his view of sola fide. He can't show you that from the church fathers, but that's okay. Forget about that. Let's not talk about that. All right. So... This isn't what you do. And just simply saying, well, it looks like it. Looks like it. Uh, sorry, but um, I've been to a number of Roman Catholic masses when I was studying Roman Catholicism especially. There was always a priest up there. And you know that in the ordination Look at this. of the priest, when he is called an altar Christus, the idea that there is a special charism placed upon his soul, which allows him to do what? To work the miracle of transubstantiation. So Justin Martyr did not have a priest in the modern sense, a priest who had a special charism placed in his soul to, the, to work the miracle of transubstantiation. But for some reason, Justin Martyr still believed that when the bishop blessed in the word of prayer according to the word of jesus that bread which he says is not ordinary bread common bread that cup which he said is not an ordinary cup common cup transmutates into the flesh and blood of jesus which later on james white will quote from martyr affirming fulfills malachi 111 that that's the sacrifice that the gentiles offer to god the actual sacrifice of jesus now made present when the bread and the cup are transmutated into the flesh and blood of Jesus, Justin Martyr, for some reason, still believed that took place without the priest of today who's got a special charism placed in his soul to work the miracle of the Eucharist. How in the world did Justin Martyr think that the bread and the cup transmutated into the body of flesh and blood of Jesus, when Justin Martyr didn't have that priest to do the miracle of the 
transmutation of the bread and the cup. Justin Martyr was amazing. Wow. Whoa. So that you can have the mass. That's why it's so important. There's nothing here. Nothing here like that. You have to read that into it. There is nothing here like that at all. So, hey, he invited us to look. So we look. Okay, guys, note the 14-minute, 50-second mark. Lord willing, I'm going to have to do a part two because my time is running out. Guys, let me give you the link. We're going to do part two, Lord willing, sometime this weekend before I head out to Arizona, God willing. 14-minute, 50-second mark because in the second part, he's going to quote Justin Martyr affirming that Justin Martyr believed that the Eucharist is the fulfillment of the prophecy of Malachi 1.11, that the Gentiles from the east to the west, rising of the sun to its setting, will offer to God a pure sacrifice. And Justin Martyr and other Christians believe that was the Eucharist of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Lord willing, I'm going to do a part two. We're going to finish it. But I hope you learned the following. And may the Lord have mercy on me, and I don't become the very thing that James White has become. May the Lord Jesus save James White or grant him what he deserves, Lord's will be done in his life. He's done too much damage. He's misled too many people. He has distorted the scriptures and church fathers for too long. May the Lord grant him repentance or give him what he deserves. And may the Lord Jesus save us, save me from my flesh, from my lusts, save me from my pride and arrogance, save me from stumbling, save me from ever shaming the Lord Jesus, blaspheming the Lord Jesus, save me from Satan and his children, save my daughters for his glory, the Lord Jesus, give me perfect self-control, self-discipline to keep this weight off, to get healthier. Some people are saying, oh, you've you got cancer. God forbid, if the Lord is pleased, give me many more years to serve him. See my daughters grow up and may the Lord Jesus make us holy unto his glory, filled with the spirit to truly love him, obey him, worship him, know his word, live his word, proclaim his word, even unto death. May the Lord Jesus provide for this ministry and grant me traveling mercies in Jesus' name. I pray I'll have many more years to serve you until the Lord comes or calls me home. We love you, Father. We love you, Son of God, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. Modern author, Lord Jesus, cover us by your blood. Save us from error, from sin, from stammering, from confusion. Save us from Satan as children and save us from false, deceitful workers. Please, Son of God, seal us by your spirit and please bring my daughters to me and save them, Lord Jesus, and help me to get healthier and keep this way off for your glory as an act of worship and use my help to glorify you and see my daughters grow up and bless your servants, Lord Jesus. Bless them. Anything I said is from the Spirit. Confirm it in our hearts and save us from deceitful arguments. Please, Lord Jesus, and use this ministry, this YouTube channel, the articles for your glory. And Lord, be with us wherever we go. Be with me in my travels and provide our daily bread for your glory. We love you, Son of God. We love you, Father. We love you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord willing, guys, I'll try to do another live stream this weekend, but do pray for me. Lord willing, I will be flying to Florida Monday. Pray for traveling safety mercies. Pray that while I'm there, the Lord Jesus will strengthen me to get holier, to continue getting healthier. The Lord Jesus will give me divine appointments. I'll still do live streams there if the Lord wills, write articles and meet people locally. If you're in Florida, I'll be traveling all over the state, Orlando, Tampa, everywhere. Contact me on Skype so I can get in contact with you. And do pray for the miracle for my daughters that Jesus will save them from their Jezebel mother, that she'll fear the Lord, save them from Martin, this wicked, filthy man who should have no business in their lives, that Jesus will bring them to me so I can kiss them and hug them again. And pray for the support. And Jesus bless you. I hope this session blessed you. And you learn to see through wickedly deceitful, dishonest arguments. Pray the Lord Jesus convict James White to repent or give him what he deserves. He's no longer useful for your ministry. I'm sorry to say it. But I have to be honest and not politically correct. He's become dangerous. May the Lord save people from his rhetoric, his deceit, and misinformation. And save us from ever becoming that way. In Jesus' name, we love you, Father, Son, and Spirit. God bless you.
Lord be with you and the Spirit fill you and me and our loved ones, my daughters, for the glory of Jesus. Take care.